a gastronomic explosion because apparently there are locals and they're used to eating it. Oh, yeah, I can't eat it, guys. Sorry, I have to take another bite because it's so good. It tastes like raw meat and so good. You have no idea. Hey guys, welcome back to Dramatically Expatic and welcome to Parma. It's not the first time that we're here and if you've been here long enough, you'll know that we've already visited Parma and absolutely loved it. And if you haven't seen my previous vlog, make sure to watch it after this one because today it's gonna be a very, very different video. Um, Parma is the heart of Italian culinary, the gastronomic capital of Italy alongside Bologna and actually it's a part of the food valley, the so-called food valley of Italy where some of the most famous uh, Italian products are being made. It's the synonym of made in Italy and today I wanted to create this uh, little gastronomic tour of Parma showcasing some of the most famous products of Parma and you probably might have an idea of what I'm gonna try today sharing some amazing spots with you, hidden spots, that not many tourists know about. There are some very famous products, but there are also some lesser famous products that I want to try and to share with you. So guys, I remind you to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Hit the notification button. And now let's go with me. Let's eat, let's try, let's indulge a little bit. Come on. You know guys how much I love starting my day in a new place from coffee but today I'm not only going for coffee I'm also going for breakfast because I haven't eaten yet I came here very early in the morning and I'm starving but I'm taking you to a very cool place not a simple pasticceria not a simple coffee shop I'm taking you to one of the oldest coffee shops in Parma the coffee shop that dating back to 1865 uh, you know it's Italy just a regular thing happening in Italy you will find places like this quite often but in my case I've been looking precisely for this place and yeah let's try it So this pastry shop is not only the oldest, but I've also heard that they have the best pastries in Parma, the best croissants in Parma. And guys, you are a true original subscriber who's probably been with me for so long. If you can guess what's inside my croissant just by looking at it, let me know in the comments if you know what's inside. If you don't know, it is obviously a raspberry croissant because I love raspberries. And I was pretty happy to see it here today. I had no idea what to expect, but when I saw it, and also look how cute it is. I love it when you have this colored uh, pastry dog. I, I, I think it's so cute, you know, just a simple little detail, but so cute. Uh, anyway, um, here's the thing. I've heard some mixed reviews of this place because yes, it's one of the oldest places in Parma, but also the um, reviews on Google Maps some were really positive while some people were not particularly happy and they said that the service was not good enough or something like that and I wanted to try and check it myself because you never know I always think that it's better to form your own judgment before relying on someone else's review you know entirely and so I wanted to try out this place and let me tell you the ladies working here are so nice and friendly and they don't know that we are filming yet so it's not that they are being nice because they see a camera you know actually in Italy it's not working it's quite on the opposite sometimes here they were really really nice with me just passing by and asking for coffee and a pastry for breakfast I have no idea why some people were not happy I will leave you a link to this place and to all other places that we are going to to visit today in the description box check it out and yeah let's finally have breakfast because as I said I'm so so hungry wow guys it's so good it is actually very very good mm, I don't know if you can see but the dough is mm, it's resembling the French croissant a little bit and it's a uh, buttery but not over buttery 
and it's really tasty. It's a very high quality dough. The jam, I always I actually just touched it. I'm gonna take another bite to try the jam. Mmm. The jam is divine. Wow, guys. It reminds me of the jam in the croissant, the raspberry jam. Actually, where my love for raspberry croissant started. I used to live in a smaller city next to Bologna when I just moved because it was impossible to find accommodation in Bologna. And uh, for a very short time that I lived there, there was this pasticceria that had this amazing raspberry croissant. And they had this homemade raspberry jam. It was so good. I couldn't find anything similar in all these years ever since. And I think this one is probably the closest to that original jam that made me fall in love with all things raspberry and raspberry croissants. It's so, so good. I highly recommend you this place because the service is good. The pastries are really, really good. Let's try the coffee now, you know, just to have the full review. And the coffee is good. Trust me, as someone who drinks a lot of coffee, I can tell you when the coffee is good. You can totally come here for breakfast or just for a quick break for pastries and sweets and some coffee. Parma, guys, is not only a beautiful city that you can walk around and explore, but clearly it's known as a food capital for a very good reason too, actually, or at least the two are the most famous. There are more reasons to be called so. And one of them is the Parmesan cheese, but I'm not talking about it today. Stay tuned because I'm planning another video dedicated to the cheese. And the other one is, of course, the Parma ham, the most famous prosciutto di Parma. And Today I am talking about it and I'm talking about a very peculiar place that I want to take you to. You know that I love uh, local authentic places and you know guys that I always try to find something special and I also love supporting local businesses. And today I'm taking you to a salumeria that is more than 80 years old where you can try and buy and even eat prosciutto di parma. First of all, there are several reasons why prosciutto di parma is not only so good and so famous, but also so healthy. Well, guys, it is absolutely 100% a natural product. The only things that I used in preparation of the final product is the uh, swing leg, salt, wind and time. And also this area of Italy, the Valley of Parma, has the perfect natural conditions in order to create this, uh, this prosciutto, because not every area uh, adapts and works for this process. So yes, uh, prosciutto di Parma is very special and you should know that there are different kinds of prosciutto. Not all prosciutto produced in Italy would be the Parma ham, would be prosciutto di Parma. And you, if you are visiting Italy, you have to um, ask for it specifically if you want to try this local prosciutto. Prosciutto di Parma, guys, is composed of water for more than 50%. Can you imagine? It actually is more than half water. So it is definitely not as bad for your health as other types of meat, especially cured meat like other hams. But, but it is also full of minerals and vitamins that are easily absorbed by the body. It is also full of unsaturated fats, which are very, very, very good for your health because they help fight off the free radicals that contribute to aging. And I think this is my, oh, this might be the reason or one of the reasons why Italians uh, do not age for so long, why they stay young for so long. Just to give you an example, yesterday I went to a coffee shop and I eavesdropped on a conversation happening in the table near me where a woman was telling her friend about her father who is 89 years old, who has just got his driver's license renewed for two more years and being so happy as he was, he decided to buy a new car. You see guys, are there are many countries in the world where you can see this happening, people being 89 years old, being so young inside that they would buy a new car because they got their driver's license renewed for two more years. This is hilarious. And these things are happening regularly in Italy. And I believe, you know, and it's also a scientific fact, not only I believe this, but 
Uh, it's a scientific fact that the Mediterranean diet, the Italian diet in particular, is very healthy. Even if you eat ham and cured meats, it's still healthy because these meats are so natural and so full of good things that is good for your health and it helps you to prevent aging. There are two things that I adore about places like this in Italy. First of all, the fact that the owners very often will know almost all of their regular clients by name. And secondly, guys, that you can meet people here and even have a small talk, a little chat with them, which is hilarious. That's why I always tell you to learn Italian because you never know who you can meet while going to get some ham. Today in Parma, for example, I met a retired musician who has once worked at La Scala Theater. So guys, first of all, I wanted to say that it's very comfortable here because you can sit, you can have a degustation, you can try different kinds of prosciutto, but you can also eat here if you want because there are several tables, not many, but a few, and you can sit here if you're lucky to get a nice spot and enjoy your meal. But secondly, most importantly, the guys working here are incredibly friendly and welcoming and they will tell you everything about their products and they're just very nice on a human level and this is so important. This is also so, so Italian. Here today I have three types of prosciutto because no prosciutto is the same and it is actually very important how long has it been seasoned and how old is the prosciutto you are eating. Here I have one that is 24 months old, another that is 36 months old, and yet another that is 42 months old. And the taste differs incredibly based on um, the age of your prosciutto. I also have this, which is the typical kind of bread. Usually it goes with um, ham, just normal ham, you know, like um, boiled ham, but it also works well with um, Parma ham and prosciutto. So let's try this one. It has this very, very fresh smell and it's supposed to be the softest. Let's try it. Mmm, guys. How can I describe you the taste? First of all, as I said, it's very, very soft, which is amazing. And it's perfect if you like this soft and mild taste because the taste is not as strong as it would be with the more aged prosciutto. It definitely is mild, but also very, very pleasant. Mm. This one is so, so good also. It's amazing. I'm gonna drink a little bit because how can I eat all of this, guys, without drinking? It's fabulous. It's so tender. It's perfectly tender meat. It's Guys, you have to try it. Now let's try this one that is 36 months old and definitely more aged one and it's like middle-aged prosciutto. The smell is stronger and it's so interesting you can gradually notice the smell getting stronger and also I suppose the taste getting stronger as you move from the youngest prosciutto to the oldest. I like this one even more. Guys, it's a gastronomic explosion, if I can say so. It's so good. You have no idea. You have to try it, honestly, to see the difference, because I feel like so many people outside of Italy, they do not know about this difference. They have no idea that you can actually try this kind of different prosciutto, and the age of prosciutto actually determines the taste. This one has much stronger taste. You can actually feel it. It's more salty as well and you can, you can feel that it's older. It's a little bit tougher, but not really hard. Mm, I think so far this one is my favorite, but also let's try the, this one, which is the most aged one. I can tell you that this smell is mind-blowing. It, it smells strongly, but also in this very pleasant way. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it here, guys, that it's harder than the other two types. And you, you can see it even before trying that it's much, much harder. But let's try it. it smells amazing. I can even smell it and already be happy. How can you describe a type of ham that is simultaneously hard, but also soft and tender? It's not dry, you know? The most important thing about the Italian prosciutto and the prosciutto of Parma in particular is that it's never dry. Personally, if we are comparing the Spanish ham, jamon, and 
the Italian hemp prosciutto. I definitely prefer the Italian one because it is never dry, dry, you know? This one is supposed to be dry, but it's so pleasantly soft still, and it's so, the, the taste is also, you know, not overwhelming. Like, you can eat it and enjoy it without having all of your senses, you know, being too overwhelmed with salt or flavor. It's still, it's just this nice adding flavor and I love it. I, I honestly don't know even anymore which one is my favorite. I think all three are absolutely awesome. Sorry, I have to take another bite because it's so good. Mm. So, so good. No, so good. You know, I've lived here for so many years and I really love discovering all these specialities of Italy. I love discovering these different types of ham, the different types of wine and how they differ from each other and why they differ from each other. And you know, even the part of the leg that you are eating is important when eating prosciutto, not only the age. And it's, it's lovely because you eat consciously, you do not just consume food without thinking, you eat and you know what you're eating and it's a different kind of experience. It turns from a purely physiological thing of eating and nourishing your body into a spiritual thing of nourishing your mind as well. And now that you know the difference, you know that the um, less aged prosciutto should be softer and have milder taste, and then as you gradually go towards a more aged prosciutto, the taste gets stronger and it also gets a little bit drier and a little bit harder. Now tell me if you can notice the difference now knowing about all this the next time you're eating the prosciutto. And don't be afraid to ask for the age of the prosciutto you are eating. Cheers and enjoy your meal. While most people know Parma for either ham or cheese or both, there is actually another speciality of this city and it's a huge tradition and a legend almost for locals and they cannot imagine their lives without it and it's a part of their culture. I honestly don't know yet what do I think and how do I feel about this traditional food, about this speciality. I am not a fan of raw meat just to give you a little spoiler because um guys i'm probably going to try raw horse meat in just a few moments i'm terrified i haven't never tried raw meat before even though i i tried to once in paris i ordered tartar and i couldn't eat it after all i just looked at it and i no sorry i can't and then another time here in italy i um was offered some carpaccio by friends and i said sorry guys no, I, I generally tried to. I even, I even picked it up, but I couldn't um, make myself to make a bite. And uh, I'm going to do it only for you guys. I hope that I'll manage to. I'm absolutely terrified. As I said, I don't even know how do I feel about it. Probably I won't be the same after eating raw horse meat. And sounds disgusting to me. But also I suppose that locals love it because I've heard so many locals talking about it and um, suggesting me to try it. And guys, I found a place that makes sandwiches, paninis, with raw horse meat. And this place, guys, is so famous here in Parma. Not only it gets top Google Maps reviews, but it's also been marked by The Economist uh, for their panini with horse meat, raw horse meat. Let's just not try not to think that it's raw. And all the locals also recommended me this place. So let's go and meet the legend, even though I have no idea where it will take me afterwards. Guys, wish me luck. So guys, here it is, smells honestly like fresh bread, I can't smell anything else at all, I can see it. Anyway, the tradition to eat horse meat here in Parma goes back to the Napoleonic times and it is supposed that Napoleon brought this tradition from France here. 
Well, maybe, maybe not. Nobody actually knows where this tradition comes from, but this is, as I said, it's a legend here in Parma and all locals love it. They usually eat it on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. And what a coincidence, it's a Wednesday today, but on Saturdays they eat it, eat it even more. And some people say that you can see long queues in front of places like this for uh, raw horse meat. So. No, I'm not trying to uh, take some time before I have to eventually try, guys. Anyway, let's see what it looks oh, oh, oh. Look what it looks like inside, guys. It's raw horse meat. I am even more terrified now. But yeah, I think I should try. People coming here are giving me weird looks because apparently they're locals and they're used to eating it. Oh, yeah, I can't eat it, guys. I can't even think of it. <laughs> Can you just imagine eating raw horse meat just like that in a panino? <sighs> Sorry, I can't. I need some time. I need some time to get ready, guys. Wish me luck. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go. Let's... It tastes like raw meat. Sorry, I I totally don't get it. Guys, I love Italian food, I love local traditions, but how can you eat raw meat? This uh, panino is made with raw horse meat with, I think it's mayonnaise or something. And then there is only salt and maybe some lemon and olive oil. And that's it, there is nothing in this horse meat. Just raw meat inside bread. Oh, I can see a cucumber here. That's really cute, I can see. Uh, maybe it's not a cucumber, maybe it's a zucchini. I really can't feel anything except for the raw meat. Uh, oh, guys, definitely no from me, but a huge local tradition and you ought to try it when you're in Parma if you eat meat. But, you know, I think whatever you think of this kind of tradition, this kind of food, it's still their local culture and the local tradition. And I'm gonna respect it. Out of respect, I tried it. Definitely not my thing. I don't, I don't like raw meat as I expected it. I never tried it before, probably will never try it again. I'm only doing this for you because I, I wanted to try it and I really wanted to, to tell you what it's like. But guys, you know, let's respect local traditions and leave them as that. But I don't think that all local traditions will work for everyone. Sorry, it's a no from me. And that's it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video from Parma. I hope that you enjoy this uh, gastronomic tour. Sometimes very classic, sometimes very extreme, but still, I think it was a fabulous day, fabulous experience. I'm so grateful to have been able to try all the things, even though I didn't like some as much as the others, but still, guys, it was something really so, so unique, you know, to try and to experience here in this uh, gastronomic heart of Italy. And guys, once again, I remind you to subscribe. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the bell button down below to see even more tours like this. And do you remember what I said at the beginning of this video? I'm still planning a video about the Parmesan cheese. So if you want to see more of it, if you want to see more travel vlogs, more gastronomic tours, also let me know in the comments if you like this type of video, this type of uh, food blogs, food tours, you know. I would really love to dive deeper into this topic and to explore more traditional uh, food and culinary traditions with you. So yeah, let me know. So subscribe and stay tuned and also put a thumbs up, comment and share this video with more people who would like to see and learn more about Italy. Thank you guys for being here and enjoy your meal.